the second part of that priest's prayer said, find comfort in his scars. When I was in college, um, I worked at the MTC Mel Room, but before that, I was in the cafeteria, and I was asked to leave because I had two workers' comp situations in a period of three weeks. <laughs> Somebody finally came and said, this really isn't the place for you. You need to be somewhere where it's safer. The first incident actually happened. My job was to be at the conveyor belt, and the trays would come through, and my job was very simple. It was just to take the glasses on the trays and to take them off and put them in a big bucket of glasses that would then go on the dishwasher conveyor belt. Very simple. Anyone should have been able to do it. But it was summertime, and there were a lot of missionaries in the MTC. And a group of elders, in total fairness, I'm just assuming they were elders, <laughs> decided to put cups and to stack them. And not just stack them, but to put honey inside of one of the cups and then stack the glass cups together. By the way, this was like in the, it was 1990. So if any of you had a son or a husband in the MTC that summer, I'd like to talk to you afterwards. We should just have a little conversation. So the glasses were coming, and it was quickly. And in my mind, I knew that if I delayed what was happening right here, it was going to be like that I Love it Lucy episode with the chocolate. You know what I'm talking about? The belt was just moving too fast. So I took the glasses, and in just a moment of total desperation, I just pulled as hard as I could, and the glasses shattered in my hands. I still have the scars from that incident on my thumbs. And those scars, as silly as that is, I look at that often and just remember that one little incident that happened so many years ago like it was yesterday. Scars truly are left as reminders. Reminders of things that have happened in our lives. The actual definition is the lasting after effect of trouble. The priest offering the beautiful prayer at Westminster said, in his scars may we find comfort. But what my spirit heard was, and in your scars, Laurel, may you find comfort. And when I heard that, it kind of caused me to pause. I knew it wasn't this scar that the spirit was referring to. And I started realizing that we all have life scars Life scars would be the after effects of just experiencing life and living mortality. I want you to think for just a minute about what your life scars might be. Do you have a life scar from living with a disability? Do you have a life scar because of a broken marriage? Do you have a life scar because of infertility? Do you feel the effects of a life scar because of a choice that you made years ago and you're still suffering the consequence. I put life scars in two categories, expectation scars and fallen world scars. Let's talk first about fallen world scars. Simply put, we live in a fallen world. And so that means we have bodies that are susceptible to injury and disease. And it means that we have interactions and relationships with people who get to have agency. You put those two things together and we're fraught for opportunities to gain scars in this life. Natural laws require natural consequences, and God is a God of law. And so while he is in control, and while he is doing everything he can at times that are appropriate to intervene in our lives, he respects agency, and he respects the laws of this world. And so in his grand plan, somehow he allows for a place of crime and war and disease and difficulty, and cancer. He doesn't will these things to happen. He doesn't will these things to happen. He allows for them. And there really is a big difference. 